Legacy Wealth, Why It Should Be the Focus. Most answers to any problem are within reach if we look hard enough. If we identify the issue, have the determination to find the solution, and persevere, we can overcome anything. And we genuinely believe and live by that philosophy every day in both our personal and professional lives. So there were points when we questioned the financial health of our personal finances and our companies. After identifying some weak areas, we analyzed how banks and wealthy individuals kept and made money. What we learned from our analysis will astound you. And it was the impetus to our developing a process we call Child Millionaire. And yes, this is a process to help the next generation have a financial leg up. But it can also help anyone improve their financial future at any stage of their lives. Exciting, right? Yes, and in this book, we will tell you how it's done in detail. But first, we must intimately understand the financial hurdles or challenges we face in life. And we will do this from a parental standpoint. The nurse places that sweet bundle in your arms and you fall in love instantly. Inwardly, you promise to always love and support this precious gift. And you mean every word. Your heart is overflowing. Having a child is one of the most rewarding and life-altering experiences. But it can also be the most daunting. When the euphoria of your child's arrival wears off, you're faced with leaving the hospital to care for them on your own. A scary time for new moms and dads. What do most new parents worry about in those first few days, weeks, months, or even years? New parents are consumed with feedings, diaper changes, sleep, and developmental milestones. Few are focused on college tuition, their child's ability to buy their first home, covering a future wedding, or how their new addition will save for retirement. This is understandable, but should parents start thinking about these things sooner than later? Yes, and here's why. Let's fast forward 18 years when the average child will graduate from high school. We know that around 69% of all high school graduates attend college, and of those graduates, approximately 63% attend a four-year program, and 37% attend a two-year school. Along with the stress of filling out applications and waiting for the school of their choice to accept them, parents wonder how and who will foot the bill for this. Will they go to state, public, or private school? Since most students will attend a four-year college, let's start with these numbers. The average cost of a four-year in-state school tuition will be approximately $26,000. Out-of-state, it's $43,000, and private, $55,000. Again, and not to over-dramatize or scare anyone, these are averages within the United States. We've known some parents who've shelled out $75,000 a year for a private, four-year, non-Ivy institution. It's also important to understand that the numbers previously mentioned around education only encompass an undergraduate degree. What about those fields which require higher education? What if your child wants to become a doctor or lawyer? Yes, they will have higher expected earnings, but the costs of getting them there will be increased. That shouldn't be a deterrent when passions are in play, but it should be something parents are prepared for. In fact, in 2017, over 600,000 individuals in the United States held a school debt of over $200,000. Students then find themselves in a very competitive game. Quite often, getting a student loan is the only solution to their problems. In fact, statistics show about half of college and university graduates are in some form of student debt. So it should come as no surprise that a student debt crisis is slowly becoming a real thing with students facing astronomical tuition fees that have potentially far-reaching consequences. For the other half, the parents are picking up the slack, and not in a very efficient way. With the high cost of a four-year post-secondary education, the basic right to education is increasingly in question. Let these numbers sink in for a second, then focus on the ways to pay for these educational costs. Cash, from a part-time job, parents, or savings, financial aid, or student loans, and grants or scholarships. Some students will get grants or scholarships or funds with loans, but most will combine these, assuming the child qualifies. Is it recommended to consider eligibility for any financial assistance or scholarships when planning for these costs? A definitive no. First, you don't know what your income will be, 
which dictates financial assistance and student loan eligibility. Second, you don't know if or how much your child will get in the way of scholarships. So if you make a healthy living and the scholarships are minimal, but you haven't prepared, you could place your bundle of joy in the unfavorable spot of needing some form of financial assistance. There are too many factors out of your control, and unless you can see into the future, we always advise people to stick with what they know.